Hello, this is Andrew Perkins for Tuts Plus. Today we're going to learn how to create reusable forms within Symfony 2. We'll then learn how to render them using a form template to give us more control of our form. This will set us up for the next couple of upcoming videos where we'll learn how to validate our form data, process the form submission, and then save that data into a database. But for this video, let's just focus on creating and rendering a form using Symfony 2. So I'm just going to switch into my text editor. Now to prepare us for future videos, I'm going to create just a regular PHP class that we can use for working with a form. This will allow us to have at least some type of data to use and manipulate without having to use a database. In our Tuts Plus Symfony app, under Source, Acme, Demo Bundle, I'm going to create a new folder. I'll name this Entity. And this is going to hold a person PHP class file. You can think of this entity folder for the moment as a place to hold our regular PHP classes, but we'll learn what entities actually are in a future video. So inside this entity folder, I'm going to create a new file. I'll save this as person.php and I'll open up my PHP tag. Now again, this is going to be just a regular PHP class, but we need to make sure to namespace it. There we go. I've namespaced it to Acme Demo Bundle Entity. Now let's go ahead and create our person class. There we go. Now I'm going to give it two protected properties to hold the person's email and full name. Now I'll create a couple of getter and setter methods that we can use to retrieve and manipulate these properties with. There we go. So you can see I've created a getter for getting the email and a setter for setting the email. And I've done this for the full name property as well. So you can go ahead and pause the video here if you'd like to copy this down. It's just a couple of very basic getter and setter methods. All right, I'll save this file and close it out. Let's now use this person class while we learn how to work with forms. To create our first form, we could just dive into one of our controllers, make a new action and create the form there, and then render it in a template. But instead, let's create a separate form class, which will allow us to more easily reuse the form and it keeps our controller slim and clean looking. Basically, what we're going to do is create a class that will bundle up the code needed to build a form that we can reuse for our person class. Let's go ahead and create that file now. Under source, acme, demo bundle, form, let's create a new file. I'll save this as person type.php and I'll open up my PHP tag. And now let's set its namespace as well. Now within this class, we're also going to use the abstract type class and the form builder interface class. So add in the following use statements. There we go. Let's now create a class named person type, which extends the abstract type class that we just added in above. And now this class is going to allow us to create a person type to be used to build a form for working with person objects. Next, we need to create a public function named build form, which will accept a builder and an array of options that we can use to build our form with. Here I've defined the build form method, which accepts two arguments, a builder object of type form builder interface from the class that we added in up here, and then an array of options if needed. Now let's use our builder object and call its add method to add a couple of fields and a submit button to our form class. Here I've called and chained on the add method three times, creating an email field with an email type, a full name field with a text type, and then lastly, a submit button. Now the final thing we need to do for our form class is we need to create a getName function, which returns a unique name for this form type. And inside of it, I'm just going to have it return the string person. So return person. There we go. That's it for our person type class. So the benefit to putting this form code that we wrote here into a separate file and not within a controller is that we can easily reuse all of this code within our other controllers. We just have to call a simple create form method to build our form rather than having to duplicate all of this code each time. Now let's use this class to build a form. We can close it out. Under source acme controller, let's open up the main controller file, which we've been working with previously. And the first thing we need to do is at the top of our class, let's put in a couple of use statements here to make sure we can use our person class and our person type class for creating our form. There we go. 
Now let's just reuse our index action since it's not really doing anything important. I'm first just going to get rid of this user array and I'm going to leave the return render statement here as we're going to use that in a moment to display our form to the browser. So inside our index action, right above our return statement, let's create a new person object to work with. Now we need to create our form and pass it to our template so that we can render it. We do this by calling a create form method and storing it into a form variable. There we go. So this method takes two arguments. The first is a new instance of our person type class that we created for our form. And the second is our person object from above. So let's pass those in. We need a new person type, and then we'll pass in our person object. So we now have a reference to our form object using this form variable. Now in our render method call, we just need to change our key name to use form and then change the actual data that we're passing to it to use form as well. And make sure that you call its create view method. If you don't do this, your form will not render. So that handles creating our form. Now we need to display the form in our index template file. We can close out our controller and under Acme Demo Bundle, Resources, Views, Main, let's open up index.html.twig. And within our body block here, let's just get rid of our if statement that we were using last time. So we don't need that anymore. And right underneath our h1 heading, let's go ahead and render our form. Let's begin by starting the form and passing in our form object. There we go. That'll create our form for us. Now we need to create our form fields for a person's email and full name by calling the form row method and passing in the email for the first row and the full name for the second row using our form object. It would look something like this. There we go. You can see we have our first form row for the person's email and then the second one for their full name. Now, lastly, we just need to end the form by calling the form end method and again passing in our form object to it. Perfect. This also will protect us from CSRF attacks as well, which is very convenient. So now finally, after all of our hard work, we can test this out in the browser to see our form all come together. Make sure to start up your server. I'm going to switch into Firefox. We can visit localhost port 8000 slash index to view our page. And great, here's our form. We have a field for the person's email and their full name, as well as our submit button. Now remember that we don't have any data validation going on, nor does our controller process our form submission. So if you submit it, it's not going to do anything yet. This video is just for you to learn how to create and render reusable forms in Symfony 2. We'll be covering form validation and form processing next week. So that's it. We now know how to create our own separate form class, build the form in our controller, and render it using a template to the browser. Stay tuned for the next video, and thanks for watching.